because, you know, yesterday, uh, Chris Hipkins, we had uh, what is, I suppose, almost becoming a regular chat um, with the leader of the opposition, which is useful to give you a balanced view of the political landscape in New Zealand. Um, we were talking primarily about tax and Labor's tax policy or, or, or decision to look again at its tax policy. And at the end of the interview, I quizzed him about the employment by the Labor Party of a man called Chanel Lal, who was instrumental in whipping up the hatred a year and a day ago at Albert Park, hatred towards a group of women who weren't demonstrating, weren't protesting, were just going to speak with each other and to each other about some issues in a public place. What ensued was one of the darkest moments uh, for free speech in New Zealand in its history. Uh, several women, most of them elderly, were assaulted. The um, primary speaker, Posey Parker, was uh, assaulted with juice or, or soup thrown at her and uh, was fled the country terrified at the recommendation of, of police. Uh, police stood by largely, um, but a person called Chanel Lal, or described by Chris Hipkins as a man, actually, um, Chanel Lal was one of those who was most responsible for what happened there. Uh, I note someone else has taken the interview I did yesterday in which Mr Hipkins denied that he ever said he'd wish he'd been there and juxtaposed it with some clips of him saying he would have been proud to be there, that he thought there were good people on both sides and, you know, it was an appropriate event, etc., I'm not responsible for how the interview was cut up and used by other people. It's out there in the in the world now. Um, he also defended the employment of Chanel Lal as an executive assistant and policy researcher in the Labour Party. We understand in the office of MP Jenny Salisa, for whom he was a uh, youth MP some years ago. Um... <sighs> I wouldn't want to dock someone because of something they've done in the past. That, uh, past. that is the kind of tactics of the intolerant left here and around the world. But I thought it was important that people knew. And I was interested to see the reaction of one group in particular, the Women's Rights Party. Because the Women's Rights Party was formed by a former um, Labour Party stalwart and Labour Party council member, Jill Ovens. So Jill joins us now. Jill, good morning to you. Uh, oh, hang on. I've got, have I got that right? Morning, Jill. Good Welcome morning. to the platform. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry about your tennis problem. Oh, oh that's all right. It's just old age <laughs> um, and stupidity. Uh, Jill, uh, were you surprised yesterday on the anniversary of Albert Park to hear that Chanel Lal was, had been employed by the Labor Party? <laughs> I guess I wasn't really surprised because he's been around for a while. He's very much linked with Shannon Albert, who's the rainbow spokesperson for Labor. Um, they call it the rainbow, but they're not really representing the entire rainbow, of course. I don't think they ever mention lesbians at all. It's all about the T, the, the TQ and all the pluses. Um, and it's dominated by gay men, actually and has a lot of power within the Labour Party. So I've got a lot of time, actually, for Jenny Salesa, but she did take um, him as her youth MP, so it wouldn't be surprising if she works mm. through that office. How strongly do you think Chanel Lal can be associated with those terrible events at Albert Park a year ago? Well, it was a combination, wasn't it? It was whipped up in the media, um, mainstream media, after what happened at Melbourne, um, with slurs about links to Nazis and neo-Nazis and what a lot of rubbish that is because Nazis can't stand women and neo-Nazis are the most misogynist lot you'd ever come across. Um, and so, so there was that. And then there was a lot of whipping up by the leadership of both Labour and the Greens, predominantly Grant Robertson um, and Chloe Swarbrick and... You know, um, Ricardo Mendenes um, March. Mendenes March, yeah, and I think uh, Goldritz was there as well, mm. and uh, and of course Michael Woods came out with um, with comments helping to whip up the antagonism towards those women who were there. 
Uh, I was a bit surprised that Chris Hipkins said that there was um, violence on both sides because there clearly wasn't. There's plenty of video evidence of but that. He, and he did call the people, the women who were there, radical feminists. Yeah, well, that wasn't my experience of most of the women that were there. There were a lot of Labour Party and Greens members there amongst the ones who were beaten up on. And so, you know, and many of us, of course, left that day. And there are people who have vowed they'll never vote Labour and Greens again. So, um, yeah. And since then, of course, that, that same night, the Women's Rights Party was essentially founded. Found, found it. So, and that's why I thought you'd be so interesting to talk to, Jill. I mean, I think Labour has actually now recognised that it lost the election. And I think part of maybe the change in approach from people like Chris Hipkins into coming onto the platform, for example, is a genuine desire to say we have to get the people who left us back. You, That's right. as having been a senior member of the party, you would be one of those people. Did Chris Hipkins say anything in his discussion with me yesterday that would bring you back? No, he really didn't. But um, I know that some people from the Labour Party women say that they miss us um, a lot. <laughs> and the, there isn't a lot of mention of women's issues, is there? Mm. Would you go back if Chanel Lau was still working for the Labour Party at Parliament? Um, well, I'm committed to the Women's Rights Party. so uh, But it, it does sort of send a signal a signal that they're not changing their stance on those issues. And it's a concern because um, as a policy researcher, more than as an EA and, and whoever the MP yeah. is, office, as a policy researcher, he's probably looking for places within the legislation that they can change the word sex to gender, which will undermine women's rights to a whole raft of protections that we put in place for very good reason over the years. Mm. Do you think, and as I said, I, I always looked at Albert Park as a low point in civic discourse in this country and free speech in this country. Do you think a year on, Jill, things have got better? Well, I, I don't, yes. I think that there's been a number of um, events that have happened since then, like Gray and Linehan coming where there wasn't um, a show of trans rights people coming out to protest. There might have been a few here and there. But basically, I think um, the political parties have shied away from getting themselves embroiled in, um, in what was a day of shame.